morning. I am uh, having a little bit of a problem right here. I am uh, should be live. I see people coming on. Hello. I'm in a new chat window here and it's just not working out very well for me right here. So I just need to, <clears throat> I think this will do it right here. Hope everybody's well. You know what? I have to jump out over into another browser because this one's not working. So just bear with me for just a second. Technology. Here we go. Oh, we have 15 people on with us. Isn't that great? Just uh, it's loading up right now. And, uh, good Saturday morning. It's, uh, it's a cold day out there, but it's a good day. And the sun's out. And that for that, I'm always thankful. A sunny day always makes things easier. And uh, as we get going with this day, I am going to pull this up right now. And I can start to see people that are here. That's wonderful. That's what we wanted. Kevin is with us, Judy and Tracy and Nancy and Jim, Barry and Margo, Scott, Kevin, Kip, Tracy, Sandy is here, Joan, Susan, Judy Hatch, Judy Martin, I think we got those all. Good morning. Good morning to you all. So, um, as we get going here, uh, I wanted to share something with you. So, um, Yesterday, I went live from our cottage uh, over north of uh, Muskegon in Whitehall, Michigan. So you got to see kind of the background there. Um, and I had gone up there. We hadn't been, hadn't been there in quite a while with the move here to Allen Park and uh, the COVID-19. So uh, anyway, I got up there and was uh, pleased to find that it was in very good shape. And also that uh, I didn't have too many problems getting things started up. But here's a story. So... Um, my son Josh, my oldest boy Josh, uh, spent two and a half years in the Peace Corps. And he did that um, about, um, let's see, he graduated in 2016, uh, 20, 2016 from the University of Michigan, and I think he started in August of 2018. He came back um, in June of 2018. He actually came back to the States. Um, late, late last summer, early last fall. He finished his two and a half years. So he was in the African country of Botswana. And Botswana is a country that's um, it's in inland Africa, South Africa, just, just north of South Africa, just south of uh, Zambia and um, uh, Zimbabwe. So um, we, um, Meg and I, and actually one of our other sons, Tom, uh, went over to visit him. And what a wonderful time that was. So uh, Botswana um, actually has one of the highest per capita incomes in all of uh, the continent of Africa. And it's highly uh, diamond mines. You, when you think of the diamonds in, in Africa, you think of South Africa. And they're certainly there. But Botswana has quite a few also. So um, that is there. And, of course, they were devastated by the AIDS epidemic. And um, that was... Um, it was actually driven by some of the diamond trade because a lot of the young men had no other options but to leave their villages and to go work in the diamond mines, and there was a sex trade there. And that's where a lot of the infections occurred, and um, there was a tremendous problem with HIV AIDS, and that's what the Peace Corps works on in Botswana. They've made some incredible, incredible uh, gains there. But Botswana is this beautiful, beautiful um, country and um, lots of wildlife. And so they, they have tried to make it in adding to their economy from the diamond trade, but also into, um, into this wildlife trade. So it's kind of, um, it's one of the places that's a little bit more expensive to go to if you want to. But what we did is we did a bargain basement, um, tented safari. So we actually hired a company 
to take us in you know, these Land Rovers with the seats in them and tents. And we actually did a seven day trip um, across the top side of Botswana and we saw some incredible things. Well, what I wanted to do in order to, to make sure that that was gonna, I wanted to buy a good camera. And, and so I did, I bought uh, a Sony camera, spent a very good amount of money on it and it was wonderful to have. Um, and then when we got back, uh, I still continued to use it a bit. And then Josh um, had some of his friends from the United States come over and they did a very similar thing. Um, so he wanted that camera. So I gave it to one of his friends to bring over there and they used it and I got it back. And, um, and then I couldn't find the camera anymore. So it's been gone for, wow, it's going probably nine months. And I figured for sure that I just put it away someplace. And when we moved from Homer to Allen Park, we'd find it. But we didn't, or I didn't, and um, so I just didn't know. I, I thought, well, boy, I didn't want to think that anybody had stolen it, but maybe I had left it somewhere, and, and, uh, and it was a good amount of money, and I, I was a little upset about it. But so uh, yesterday, not expecting it at all, uh, going through the stuff up in the cottage, and I go to the, I go to a, a, a rarely used bedroom, and I open the closet, and what do I find? I find, I find the long lost camera. So, um, what was lost is now found, and I have to say that it was, it was. Uh, I don't want to say joyous because it's just a physical thing, but it was actually it was a relief. And I think the biggest thing that it was a relief for me was that in the back of my mind I was saying, you know what, I think that somebody stole this, and I was thinking the worst. Uh, nobody stole it, right? People are good. So there it was. It was just me probably putting it away. Um, so it wasn't out in the open or something when, when we had people over at the cottage. So there it is. I have, what was lost is now is found and, uh, and we enjoy that. So that was a, a high point of my day yesterday. I wanted to share that with you. All right. Why don't we look at our, uh, devotions for today? This is Saturday and it's the 9th of May tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is the 10th and, um, that's Mother's Day. So if you're a mom, I wish you great tidings. It's going to be a little bit difficult because we got a lot of separation. And um, it's really, so I think that there's going to be, um, there might be some sadness on this Mother's Day. But, but uh, if, you, if your mom is still alive, God bless you. And um, make sure you give her a call uh, if you can't visit. Um, video chats are great. Um, I'm hoping all three of my boys uh, will do that um, tomorrow with with Meg. So, and if um, and if you if you have kids and um, they're not around um, and you're a husband, I think you need to step up your game a little bit. Just make sure that because uh, the kids can't do anything right now. So just make it a very special day. I had one friend that said, "Honey, don't worry about it." I, it you're not going to have to do any dishes on Mother's Day. We'll just leave them in the sink, and you can do it on Monday. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think he's going to stay married too long with that. So our devotions for today, uh, our, our morning psalm is Psalm 92. This is so um, comforting to hear because uh, the psalms that we've been reading have been so uplifting. So this one continues that. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp and the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The dullard cannot know, the stupid cannot understand this. Though the wicked sprout like grass, and all evildoers evil flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. For your enemies, O Lord, for your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. But 
they are green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no unrighteousness in him. The word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Sometimes I have to go back and think that we're just repeating a psalm that we just had not so long ago, but um, that hasn't been the case, really, uh, a couple times. But this, it's just that the psalms have such a consistent theme, um, and, and that's, that's really what we don't know. Nobody was there, but what we feel is that these were, these were basically call to worships that, uh, that people would use uh, as they came into the, originally to the temple, because that was the only place for worship in Jerusalem, but then eventually to all the synagogues also. And that's probably in the synagogue worship where a number of the psalms ended up um, being written down because they would they would have each synagogue might have a small variation to it. So that's where they greatly expanded was during that synagogue period. And that would have been uh, that would have been during the second temple period, which would be after the rebuilding of the temple and um, before the fall of that, which would have been seventy A.D. So there's a good five hundred year. Um, 500 year uh, span there where some of these psalms were added to, although almost all of them were uh, in the uh, were done probably closer to three or 400 years before that. So we're reading stuff that's 2,500 years old. Isn't that great? So uh, reading in on Exodus, we've been reading along as far as that goes. Exodus 40 verses 18 through 38 this morning. Um, this is all with Moses and leading the people in the wilderness. Um, the Ten Commandments have been delivered, and, and um, it, now they have produced the Ark of the Covenant, and now that accompanies them wherever they go. So let's listen for the word of the Lord. Moses set up the tabernacle. He laid its bases and set up its frames and put in its poles and raised up its pillars. And he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent over it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the covenant and put it in the ark and put the poles on the ark and the mercy seat above the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set it up and set up the curtain for screening and screened the ark of the covenant as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the temple table in the lent in, I'm sorry. He put the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the curtain and set the bread in order on, in order on it before the Lord as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting, opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle, and he set up the lamps before the Lord as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting before the curtain, and he offered fragment, fragrant incense on it as the Lord had commanded Moses. He also put in place the screen for the entrance of the tabernacle. He set up the altar of burnt offering at the entrance of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and offered on it the burnt offering and the grain offering as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set the basin between the tent of the meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing, with which Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet. When they went into the tent of meeting and when they approached the altar, they washed as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set up the court around the tabernacle and the altar and put up the screen at the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the Israelites would set out on each stage of their journey. But when the cloud was not taken up, they did not set out until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day. And fire was in the cloud by night before the eyes of the house of Israel at each stage of their journey. The word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. I just really love this story because it's, it, it offers us a specificity that it's just sometimes is just so lacking in, in um, things that we don't know about. But here it actually had the geometrical setup of how this tabernacle. So tabernacle in essence means tent. And um, so at this point, it says that the, um, the Ark of the Covenant existed. It had been made uh, according to all the decrees of God and that they had this tent and that there was an inner sanctum on it that <clears throat> had a curtain around it where this, where this would be. And then in front of that would be an altar and then a screen 
and then before then before that uh, there would be a basin for washing for purifying and then behind that another screen and before you got to the entrance of the tent so this successive levels of um, of uh, security almost so and we also know that this uh, when the, the temple is described when Solomon makes that um, it was a, a very similar thing but even expanded more uh, than that but here's the interesting thing it talks about the glory of the Lord the cloud that covers the tabernacle and we call that the sh uh, Shekinah glory and um, so what's happening here is that God dwells he goes tabernacling he's tenting with the people of Israel so he dwells there and when he's there uh, the cloud descends and as long as that cloud is there they don't go anywhere that's where God is and it's when that cloud lifts and it goes before them as a pillar that they follow that and that is how they went and, and made their way across the desert Isn't that wonderful now we all wish we could see the Shekinah, Shekinah glory now um, but I have to tell you that there is there is there's people that have, have seen this, this, uh, this smoke and cloud of God that appears. Um, I pray I might see it one day. I really do. But there's, there's people that are very learned, very, um, they, are, they are very faithful, um, and they have witnessed it. So uh, when I read that, when I read this here in Exodus, and then in other portions of it, and then I hear those stories. If you really want to uh, um, read about the, probably the most, uh, the one that was seen the most was the Azusa Street uh, um, in Los Angeles back in the 1910s, um, that there was a revival there, and it happened in a barn. But uh, for a couple years there, um, there are reports of this, this uh, Shekinah glory that would descend on this barn. And uh, so look up Azusa Street, uh, and you'll read all about it. It's uh, really neat. I have some books on it that if you're ever interested in knowing, um, I'd be glad to lend to you. And the, one of them is called, They Told Me Their Stories, and this was uh, the people that were, that were there, and part of it, as they got older, they, they tended to live in, the, many of them lived in the same uh, senior citizen's home. So this would have been really in the 1950s and early 1960s. And there was a younger man who um, was a worker there, and he got to know many of these people. And um, they would uh, invite him in to their apartments. And uh, he, as he said, they, they'd give me cookies and milk, and they told me their stories. So uh, the name of the book is They Told Me Their Stories, and it's really, it's really interesting. I mean, this is not stuff that, uh, these are not crazy people that are talking. These are just people that had a real experience of God. And... Um, it's really neat. So that's where we are today. I think we'll stop right there. Um, tomorrow, 10 a.m., uh, we invite everybody to join us for live worship from the sanctuary of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church. It's Mother's Day. There's some very, very special music that, um, that uh, Margot Davis uh, will be ringing a bell solo accompanied by Christine uh, El Hajj, and um, it's beautiful. I listened to it being practiced yesterday. So that will be a great thing for us, uh, a great treat for us. And uh, it is Mother's Day, so we'll have some special prayers too. So God bless all, and uh, before we go, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you as we gather here today that uh, you've given us a beautiful day. We also ask you, though, that you uh, bless us with your presence as we go about it, that we understand that there are blessings that we will see each and every day. We hear of how you worked with your people and walked with them. And Lord, we read of the Shekinah glory. And Lord, we pray that uh, that, that same glory may be visible to us at some point, that we'll know that you're always near. And then Lord, that uh, we our wills will become melded and we'll bend to yours and that we will be the disciples that you desire. Lord, we pray for all who are sick right now. We ask for their healing. For those who are lonely on this day, Lord, we ask that you uh, give them relief. And then, Lord, we thank you for the technology that we're using to stay in touch so that we can be together. 
that our voices can be joined in prayer and also in worship and joy. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, friends. I'll go back here real quick. and Sometimes it's a little tough. Oh, Matt Carlson is with us, and Patty is with us. And Sarah is with us. And Joanne Taylor, good morning. And Barbara. Can't tell how many people are here right now. This is... Um, Technology is great. Oh, we're up to 27 people. There it is. So that's a, that's a, like a record for us. <laughs> so it is a good day. God bless you all. We'll see you all on tomorrow. Have a great day.